Jesus is waiting on us to work with him to touch lives and transform societies. But how does Jesus change the world? We'll discuss the biblical answers in today's episode of Invasion of Light podcast. Welcome to Invasion of Light podcast, where we study God's word to equip and ignite you to invade your world with the light of Jesus Christ. My name is JJ Weller. I'm on staff with Message Ministries, that's sharegodshope.com, and the co-author of Invasion of Light, How Jesus Can Use You and Me to Win the Battle for Souls and Societies. And my name is Brian Weller. I, too, am on staff with Message Ministries and the other co-author of Invasion of Light. And we're just so happy that you're joining us today and pray that God blesses you, encourages you, inspires you to uh, fulfill the call that he's given you because you are the light of the world. Amen. Well, today we're going to continue our series on the ministry of reconciliation. In our first episodes, we saw that Jesus wants to use us to change the world. We just saw that he's waiting on us to join into the spiritual battle. But how does Jesus change the world? What is his strategy for spiritual transformation in souls and societies? And we're going to begin a fresh series all about the ways that God moves into people's lives through the gospel uh, from studying this ministry of reconciliation. So the first method of Jesus in changing the world that we're going to discuss is that Jesus changes the world by appealing through us. In 2 Corinthians 5.20, it says, We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. Listen to those words. God was making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. We mentioned this last week, but I want to bring it up again because I think it's really important. Every translation kind of translates that word parakaleo in the Greek into different things. You know, the NIV has pleading and uh, uh, making its appeal. Yeah. The New King James uses this word, and I think it's accurate as well. It's as if God were pleading through us. Oh, wow. Yeah. He's pleading through us. He's making his desire known through us. He's entreating us. He's exhorting through us. And so the invitation is given Yeah, through us, the ambassadors of Jesus Christ. And, and I don't know about you. I've, I don't have any, you know, letters at the end of my name. <laughs> you know what I mean? I <laughs> Just can't W-E-L-L-E-R. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I, I don't have, you know, uh, if any of those letters that make you, you know, seem, seem important, which you probably are important if you have those letters. <laughs> but I do have... I guess I could say I have an AC, Ambassador of Christ. Amen. <laughs> and no matter who you are, you know, you are heaven's royalty wow. because you are an ambassador of Jesus Christ. And God loves you so much, loves us so much that he has put inside of us the love of Jesus Christ and God, the Holy Spirit. Right. To enable us to be that ambassador, to plead through us. Right. To make his appeal known through us. And that's what we've been talking about. And it's just a, just a wonderful uh, topic for us to talk about because this is not only life-giving to us, but it's life-giving to those that get to hear the Word of God through us as we get inspired to go. Amen. Well, I think it's so crucial to explore as well because a lot of times we think in a carnal way, we think in a fleshly, worldly way. And I don't just mean, you know, that we think sinful thoughts. I mean, we as we've been talking about, we count people out because we say they don't look like they're very open to the gospel, things of this nature. But the truth is, and this is why it's so important to study God's appeal, no one ever truly turns to Jesus until God appeals to their heart and shows them their need of a Savior. It says this in John six forty four: No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him and I will raise him up at the last day. So we look at people and we say, they're not open. I'm not ready to preach the gospel to them. And God already told us that naturally no one is open. If if someone else treated us like that, according to this knowledge, we never would have heard the gospel. Right. The, The fact is that on our own, we are dead in our trespasses and sins, as we've mentioned, and we need the gospel to come in and wake us up. And this is... God's divine appeal. That's how he changes the world. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's important, JJ, as you were sharing, I, the thought came to me that one thing God is appealing to us as well yeah. is to remind us that we, you know, we are capable <laughs> of doing this. Yeah. 
and and the Holy Spirit is constantly nudging us. You know, right. uh, we call it being led of the Holy Spirit, but he's nudging us. You you feel that nudging inside your heart to say something or maybe first to pray for someone or to respond to a divine appointment that comes where we can give that appeal from right. God to them. But but one thing I want to appeal to you for just very briefly yeah. is is to remember who you are in Jesus Christ. Amen. Remember, because this the word of God actually describes who you and I are. Yeah. Right. Right. And when we live below that, we're be living below the level that God wants us to, because so the Bible says that we're to be more than conquerors through him that loved us and gave himself for us. Amen. And a conqueror doesn't cower in fear. And I'm not saying we're not going to face fear. Facing fear doesn't mean I'm a fearful person. Right. It, it means that that's a battle that I'm facing and we all have that. Right. And that's part of the biggest battle in fulfilling this verse. Right is battling through that fear to speak. Yes, absolutely true. Can I read something, Jade? Yeah, of course. I, I know this this wasn't in our notes here, but this is something that's inspired me before, and I pray it'll inspire you before we move on. And this is by Erwin McManus in the book, The Barbarian Way. The original call of Jesus was so simple. It was so clean and so clear. Follow me. He wants us to surrender our lives to him and follow him into the unknown and if it means life of suffering, hardship, and disappointment, it will be worth it because following Jesus Christ is more powerful and more fulfilling than living with everything in the world minus him. Have we forgotten this? Have we become so refined and so civilized that the benefits of our faith have become more precious and more valuable to us than the benefactor of our faith? And I, I think when we talk about being uh, an ambassador of Jesus Christ, we also have to talk about that we need to represent Jesus the way he wants to be represented. Yeah. It's crucial because if we don't, we begin to, we begin to preach our own brand of Christianity. It's true. And when we preach our own brand of Christianity, sometimes the fear side of us says, I don't want to talk about repentance. I don't want to yeah. confront the sin, you know, even by name. Yeah. Oh, Jesus did it. Right. Right. We, we see that in a few places. We, we see that with, with the tax collector, right, yeah. who came down from the tree and he ate at his house. We see with Mary Magdalene. We see in different places. So I, I just wanted to throw that in because yeah. I think that's really important. Well, one reason why a lot of us have that fear is because we have an incorrect and a crippling doctrine of sin. Mm -hmm. There was a big study okay. put on recently by a ministry called Ligonier. They call it the State of Theology. This was in 2022. They found that 55% of U.S. evangelicals agree that everyone sins a little, but most people are good by nature. <laughs> now, if that's true, if most people are good by nature, then it's my duty to figure out who's ready and who's not. Right. <laughs> but if people are dead in their trespasses and sins, I just have to go out and preach the gospel and let God do the convicting right. and let God do the testifying as I go out and I preach the, the word with wisdom. So let's look in the word and let's see clearly the reality of sin. This is why we need God's appeal to our hearts before our lives can truly be changed. This is Romans 3, 10 to 18. And Paul is mixing together some of the strongest condemnations of mankind and its sin in the Psalms. It says, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understands. They don't even understand without God bringing them clarity. Right. There is none who seeks after God. They won't even seek unless the Lord right. teaches it, which he will teach. Yeah. He says they'll all be taught of God. We'll get there. They have all turned aside. They have all together become unprofitable. There is no one who does good. No, not one. Their throat is an open tomb. With their tongues, they have practiced deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are shift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. And that's a very sobering reality. Everyone else, every one of us needs to come to terms with our own sin personally uh, before we can come to Jesus. But as an evangelist, it's both a burden, but it also releases some of the pressure off of us. Right. Because we realize 
every single person needs a miracle in their heart. Yeah. <laughs> every single person needs a miracle in their heart before they're going to understand the gospel. And then at that point, it's their choice if they're going to uh, reject or if they're going to follow Jesus. But we need to realize that truth. Uh, lost people in themselves, they don't have any, any tendency right. uh, for course correction. There's no fear of God before their eyes. So we need to go out and we need to be vessels of God's word. He speaks through us and opens up uh, deaf ears. And that's the problem. A lot of people say, okay, so God does the drawing. So I can just sit back and pray. And that's not right either. Right, no. <laughs> because God draws through teaching, not force. A lot of times when we hear about drawing, we picture God sending some mystical force to make people have like a warm fuzzy inside so they feel like, now I'll respond. But no, his drawing is actually very practical. Right. It, it says in the very next verses, it's written in the prophets, they shall all be taught by God. It says, therefore, everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. In John 1, 9 to 11, it says, Jesus' light shines on every man. It says this, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. But does everyone recognize him? No. In verse 10, it says, he was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. Right. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. So we see that Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, teaches the sinner teaches all of us of our need for a savior, but just like a student in a classroom, I can teach a student in a classroom and I can teach them very effectively and I'll teach all those students, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to learn. Just like it says it, uh, just like Jesus said in that same verse 646, everyone who has heard and learned from the father. Right comes to me. Not just those who heard, not just those who Jesus taught, those who Jesus taught, and they actually listened. Right. Well, there's a few things, so many thoughts running through my mind with what you just shared, which is excellent. One thing, if my French teacher from 1970 is listening, she'd probably agree with you because she taught the whole class and I still got an F. <laughs> but, but, but that's a good point, you know. But what's interesting is in that verse— the verse that you shared, I want to focus on a little bit. Therefore, everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. That word for heard in the Greek is the word akuo. Huh. We get our word acoustic from, okay? Now, if you go into the great music theaters of the world, they say they're just acoustically perfect, okay? And so this means actually hearing what is being taught. Because if we hear the word of God, it goes into our heart like a seed. Right. Makes me think of the of the sower and the seed. We actually heard it, right? So we we receive it. It goes in, and then it can begin to to bring forth fruit in our yeah. lives. I think it's beautiful that the Lord allows us to participate in this process. That He's the one who draws, but He speaks through us. Actually, the Bible makes it clear that this is how Jesus is going to change the world. Long ago, the prophets proclaimed how Jesus would change the world. His teaching would bring hope and direction to the nations. Listen to Isaiah 42, 1. Here is my servant, talking about Jesus, whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on earth. How? So we see he's promising over time to establish justice on earth. We know that's going to finally happen when he returns. But while we're in the waiting time, how is he making a difference in this world and bringing justice into people's lives? In his teaching, the islands will put their hope. Islands there just represents the uttermost parts of the world. And Jesus commanded us, go into the uttermost parts of the world. Go into all the world and preach, teaching them yeah. to do all that I've commanded you to do. So he's calling us to be part of the fulfillment of that prophecy. He wants to teach through us. He wants to open up blind eyes, and draw the lost so that now they can respond and they can say, Jesus, I want to follow you. I want to turn from my sins and I want to walk with you. And, you know, thing of it is, you mentioned the islands and what it represents. And I think this is a good point to to kind of expand our, our view of the Ministry of Reconciliation, yeah. because in America, we spend so much time, so many efforts reaching the same people over and over. And we should keep you know, evangelizing the people within the realm of our influence and, and the divine appointments that God gives us. We never want to stop doing that. Absolutely. Because he didn't say you'll be a witness uh, 
in Jerusalem or Judea or Samaria or the uttermost <laughs> parts of the world. He didn't say that. He didn't say pick one. He, he says, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and, okay? So that and tells me that every person is to be involved in worldwide evangelism, right. okay? And obviously, not everyone is going to go. And I think I mentioned this before. We don't need thousands of people doing short-term mission trips That's to the true. same places to do the same things over and over again. We need to refocus uh, our strategy when it comes to reaching these this part that says the islands. Right. And fortunately, and I know we've mentioned this before, but it's always worth re-mentioning again. Yes. Because of the great work that has been done by previous generational missionaries, right. there are enough indigenous leaders in the unreached islands, the unreached areas of the world that can preach God's word in their language. Yeah. And, and we need to get behind that as yes. well. We really do. And to be honest with you, if I really have that ministry of reconciliation, I cannot be a non-participant. Okay. And we've yes. been talking about the whole thing as sometimes people say, well, I really don't feel like that heart is ready. I hear people say, well, I really don't feel called to reach the unreached. And so I would say to you, if that's you, so are you willing to sit by knowingly that knowing that 50,000 people die every single day in the area of the world called the 1040 window who have never heard about Jesus Christ? Are you willing to just sit around and do nothing about that? And, and, and if you say yes, then I would have to say you are not being led of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You are not. And not that you're going to be involved everywhere, but you are to be involved somewhere. Right. Okay. Witness Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. So I want to put that in because I really feel like the Holy Spirit wants to communicate that to you. And I think that leads us to the question, how does God teach the lost so they can be saved? Is it through a mystical voice in the air? I mean, I think a lot of times we are sitting there praying and we're saying, uh, God, I just pray that you'd send your truth to this person or that person. And up there in heaven, God is saying, JJ, I'd ask that you'd go send my truth to this person or that yeah, person. Speak it. Yeah. <laughs> you go. I already told you to go. Because he appeals through us. It's like that verse that we already mentioned. We're his ambassadors. That means he's the king and we're his representatives. And it says he's making his appeal through us us. Listen to that and remember it forever. He's making his appeal through us. And he promised that reality to the disciples in Matthew 10, 19 to 20, which is an incredible verse. He says, when they arrest you, do not worry about what to say or how to say it. At that time, you will be given what to say. Listen, for it will not be you speaking. Mm -hmm but the spirit of your father speaking through you. So a lot of times we're praying and saying, God, I pray you'll speak to this person. But he would remind us that when we preach the gospel in the power of the Holy Spirit, it's not us speaking, but the spirit of our father speaking through us. And that's the word that can go directly to the heart. It can convict of sin. It can reveal the beauty of Jesus. And it can lead someone even right there, even in a short period of time, sure. to come to Jesus right there, and that God will pour out His Spirit and change their lives right on the spot. We need to see a lot more of these things. And one reason, one way that we'll see more is if we believe that God is ready to speak through us. It's like an adventure. It's like a, an adventure map. We should be going out in the day wondering, I wonder if today the Lord will give me the word that He will use to draw someone into His kingdom. Yeah. Well, and I think if we if we stay in communication with the Father, I mean, when we read about being sent in a couple of verses, the word is pempo, which means we're dispatched. dispatched. Yeah. So we're dispatched out. You know, I've never been an Uber driver, but <laughs> if you were, you get dispatched all the time by getting these calls to go here and there. And you have to decide if you're going to accept it or not, right. right? Well, we are being dispatched by our Heavenly Father through the direction of the Holy Spirit to go to certain people, to go to certain places. You may be driving somewhere and you feel like I'm supposed to take, take a right turn here. And you're like, why do I feel like I'm supposed to take a right turn? And you go down that street and you either see someone you've been praying for, or maybe there's an accident and you feel impressed to get out and pray for them or whatever the case may be. And I also want to touch too on this. We are not saying that God cannot reveal himself oh, through of not. divine providence. And we hear stories yes. of that, okay? Muslims that are seeing visions. Yes. You know, uh, and hearing the gospel that way. 
But our call, okay, that's not us. We can't do that. Right. <laughs> God can choose to reach people how he wants to, right. but that will never lessen the call that he's already given us through his word to fulfill what he's called us to do, the way he's called us to do it, with the message he's given us, which right. is the message of reconciliation, the message of atonement. Right. Definitely. And that reminded me of a quote from Invasion of Light. And I want us to read this real quick and think about it. Can we really quench the power of God's kingdom in our lives? Can we really stop God's invasion of light from advancing in and through us? Of course. That's why Paul commanded us not to when he says, quench not the spirit right. in 1 Thessalonians 5.19. Here's an example. Have you ever shrunk back when God asked you to share the gospel with someone? Maybe you got a holy nudge that you should serve your neighbor and share the good news with them. You responded to the Lord, well, I can serve them as a sign of love, but I don't want to tell them about Jesus. Or perhaps you saw your neighbor working on their car and felt led to help them and then share the gospel. Instead, you excused yourself saying, maybe later, Lord, but I need to work on my own car today. At that moment, the Holy Spirit wanted to move through you, but you wouldn't allow him. God's kingdom wanted to come, but you didn't want to go. We're sorry to say it, but we've done it plenty of times too. And that is why this reality is so important for us to grasp that God appeals through us because yes, he can appeal through providence. And yes, he does draw in other mysterious ways, oftentimes, probably partially because we're not out there preaching the I, gospel. I believe you're right. <laughs> yeah, I believe you're right. But when we realize that his appeal comes through us, our mission really comes into focus and we see I need to obey this call because there's not a lot of time. People all around me are dying, and I need to bring the Word of God to them. And brothers and sisters, remember this. You know, we are living on this planet a fraction, a very f minuscule fraction of time compared to eternity. We are going to spend, you know, centillions of years and beyond in the heavenly kingdom. So why do we want to squander our life the very short life that we have on planet Earth for things that just don't matter. He saved us, not just to bring us to heaven one day, yeah. right? Half the excitement of life is is being an ambassador of Jesus. It's, yeah. it's doing God's work. And we all have different places in that. Right. But we all have a certain level of importance and we all have a we all have a sphere of influence. Yes. OK, God has put us all somewhere strategically placed us in families and neighborhoods and, and what have you, workplaces, schools, to be a witness. And we, we have to be uh, very responsive in God's call for the sake of fulfilling the heart of God and for the sake of those that so desperately need the hope that can only come through Jesus Christ. And you have it. We have it. <laughs> Let's not hoard it. Amen. Well, we're going to wrap this show up into two episodes. We have a lot of notes ahead yeah. of us on the same theme, but I do want to end on this thought. We know that we're not saved by works, but the Bible does say something very surprising. The Bible explicitly tells us that we're saved by words, not our words, but the words of the gospel. Listen right. to this in Acts eleven fourteen. An angel is promising a man named Cornelius that Peter is going to come and preach the gospel to them. And this is what he says. He... Peter will bring you a message and the NASB says we'll speak words to you through which you and all your household will be saved. So he will bring you a message. He will speak words to you through which you and all your household will be saved. And so what do we see here? If we want to see awakening in our societies, if we want to see God move in our families, maybe with your little ones at home if you're a parent, or maybe your friends if you're a high schooler, or the people that you're reaching as a missionary, or just an everyday person at work, if we want to see God move in awakening in these settings, we need to bring this message of the gospel, the message of reconciliation, because the Bible explicitly tells you that that is what God is going to use to bring whole households into the kingdom. So we need to go into all the world and preach this message to everyone who will hear. And let's see what amazing things God will do as he appeals through us. And we'll continue talking about that next week. Dad, would you wrap us up in response to the Lord in prayer? All right, Father God, once again, we come to you. Lord, you are our source of strength. You are our source of vision. You are our source of purpose. 
Jesus Christ. You are our Savior, our Lord. You're, you're our commander. <laughs> you're our boss, so to speak. And, and we want to respond to you. We want to do what you want to do. So, Lord, we just, we just thank you that you gave us a command to go into all the world and to preach, to say this gospel to every creature. So, God, we ask for your courage. We ask for your wisdom. We ask for your divine appointments. And we say to you once again, here I am, Lord, send me. And now we look forward to those opportunities that you're going to present to us in the coming days and weeks because we ask for it honestly. And we know you hear our prayer because we pray it in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, we want to thank you so much for joining today. It's such a blessing to have you. Yeah. If you want to grow as an ambassador of Jesus, we want to encourage you to check out Invasion of Light, how Jesus can use you and me to win the battle for souls and societies. It's a practical guide to everything about the Great Commission. And Espanol. we also have it in Spanish. Just go ahead, check out invasionoflight.tv. You can get both of them very affordably online. And all the proceeds from these books go directly to missionaries on the foreign field with message ministries and missions. Speaking of that, we want to let you know that Invasion of Light is a ministry of message ministries and missions. Message Ministries is an evangelical nonprofit missionary organization dedicated to reaching the unreached and teaching the reached to do likewise. You can learn more about that at sharegodshope.com and even sponsor a missionary in an unreached nation for as little as $100 a month. We want to encourage you, help us get this biblical message to the whole world. Share this with a friend, like, comment, click that notifications bell, subscribe on your favorite podcast network, Every time you do something like that, it helps for these videos to get out to more people so that more people can learn about the Great Commission. We also want to let you know that these videos are available in subtitles in many languages. If you want to use Invasion of Light podcast as a missionary training resource or any kind of resource in other countries, you can go ahead and just choose the subtitle that you want down in that bottom right corner. Thank you so much for joining us. And until the next time, let's go invade the world with the light of Jesus Christ. Oh,